really are back the viewers after that amazing segment when it comes to our lawyer. And with that, we came to the guest segment. We have with us Mr. Rajbal Tayagi, architect and managing director at uh, Turnkey Interiors Company. We're really happy to have you here as guest in Hala Kuwait. Thank you very much. Yes. So at the beginning, Mr. Uh, uh, Rajpal, if you please tell us about uh, your specialization. How did you start in this career itself? Sure. Maybe first of all, I would like to thank you, Kuwait TV Channel 2, English program, and all your team and government of Kuwait because you have given me opportunity and you have invited me for this interview. So thank you because this is Kuwait is like home to me. And um, to share, I will share how the, my journey began. I came to Kuwait in 1978, mm -hmm. and I'm an architect, so I started working with a local architectural firm. I continued working until 1983. Mm -hmm. Then in 1983, I joined an interior fit-out specialized company mm -hmm. who used to deal with specialized interior design and fit-out. Mm -hmm. So. 1983 we began and then I gained a lot of experience. I had a wonderful boss and a very good team who taught me, who guided me and I took a wonderful experience with them. Then 1990 invasion of Kuwait took place. So like everybody else I had to leave and went back to Delhi. Mm -hmm. Then in 1990 I started my this business of interior design and construction which we call turnkey interior projects. Mm -hmm. with the same name what I use it today in Kuwait and somehow it is God's blessing that I had to come back to Kuwait and we started uh, working our own business and since then uh, I should say we have never looked back mm -hmm. uh, thanks God in this journey since 1992 until today we must have done more than 1500 to 1600 projects mm -hmm. in the field of interiors yes. And all these projects are different nature, different variety. Mm -hmm. We specialize in doing a lot of offices, a lot of hospitality projects, a uh, lot of retail, luxury, fashion. Uh, I'm happy to share that we have done, uh, you could say, in Alhamra Tower only, more than 16 to 18 floors and various other retail. Mm -hmm. We have done in Kuwait more than 196 banks and their branches. We have done more than 300 restaurants in Kuwait. So like this, the journey is wonderful. And uh, we got the opportunity to work in various fields. And uh, our main aim is that our clients should remain happy. So I can very proudly say that wheresoever we worked, our clients have repeated. And uh, they were very happy and satisfied with our work. Yes. I should say the, the key was the creativity that every time when we were given a project, we came out with a solution which was very creative. Mm -hmm. And my team in the office was very helpful. And with the help of my team, we were able to give a very nice and new concept of the projects to our clients. Yes. It's really interesting, like the journey, mashallah, that you have. It's like been a really nice long journey here, working in the field itself and coming back and also having the company and working again in Kuwait. And as you mentioned, like this is like more of the, let's say, modern uh, Kuwait that you've uh, placed and worked with and maybe creating also, the, let's, as you mentioned, the Hamra Tower. Like what other kind of things that you actually helped uh, in doing more when sure. it comes for the modern Kuwait? Well, um Maybe I'll take a little bit before. I have seen Kuwait since 1978, yes. where it was the Shahra Jahra Street, and yes. basically the whole activities or business or entertainment or office activities surrounded. Mm -hmm. But so we have seen the building of Kuwait. So from that era until now, where we see the new malls, new office towers, new restaurants, malls like Avenue, uh, new entertainment place like Kuwait Towers. Mm -hmm. Alhamra luxury towers. So the journey is like uh, you could say developing to develop. Mm -hmm. Today very proudly we could say that we have seen Kuwait that from developing stage to developed stage. And we have worked with the old times where people were I should say leaving or they had they didn't have much of or bigger exposure. Mm -hmm. And now where people travel a lot they see worldwide lot of things. So we are working with the new buildings, new malls, and I should say new various stores. Yes. 
So this journey has been really fantastic. And again, the theme is that every time we come out with an office design, or so we develop a corporate theme of that office. Yes. If there's a brand which, whether from US or from Europe, they wanted us to develop their brand here, mm -hmm. so we were able to develop and create a fit out situation for them in Kuwait. Yes. So similarly, whether it's a hospitality project, it's a luxury brand like Van Gogh and uh, uh, um, Arpels or Bulgari, and we were able to do those in luxury. Whether it was the theme of entertainment like game works, so we were able to do. I am very proud to say that uh, I was involved into design and construction of Kuwait Tower, yes. which is a proud and I would say uh, it, it's an historical project, it's yes, a monumental indeed. project of Kuwait. In 2000-2001, we were involved in design as well as construction and fit out. Mm -hmm. And in 2016, we again redesigned and we kept that this property should have some of the features when it was really built in somewhere 1975-78. Yes. So the journey began from there until Kuwait Towers, Hamra, we also did Khiran Resort in 1992. Mm -hmm. uh, we designed and built with another company. Yes. So I should say that we, it gave me a great pleasure that we were involved in a variety of projects which runs from office to recreation to hospitality to health and spa and to commercial nature. Yes. And as you said and mentioned, mashallah, you had really interesting and let's say lots of uh, let's say prints everywhere when it comes to the landmarks of Kuwait, of course, and especially when it comes to Kuwait Towers. And if you want to talk about uh, the most challenging things that you've done or like say the most challenging projects that you faced during your journey as an architect, like can you talk about uh, that field itself? Sure. Uh, if you see the shape of Kuwait Tower is a sp spherical. Yes. It's, it's a round building. Mm -hmm. So when you design a round building, the outer parameter is very different of the size and the internal parameter is a different size. Mm -hmm. So it was a big challenge. Plus the adding the services because this was built and constructed in 1975-77, somewhere there. So we had to have all the electromechanical services and uh, particularly the, we had to work because there were we have to follow the rules and regulations of the Kuwait Fire Brigade Department in mm -hmm. Kuwait. So with keeping all those factors, it was a real challenging and tough job because all the materials, what we had to use, it had to be fireproof mm -hmm. because there was no, uh, I should say that there were elevators, but in today's building, there are many more staircases, mm -hmm. accesses, exits, but this didn't happen at that time in mm -hmm. Kuwait Towers. So our design resolved that human safety mm -hmm. and our uh, monumental nature of the design theme and being a historical project we kept that we do not make it so modern that it look like that uh, another project of a recreation it should have its own unique identity and that's what we created here in our design yes so uh, mr arpal when it comes to your family and your kids and and when you tell them like uh, i helped me like we're creating this tower and this building and so on like how do you see the family reaction towards it itself well first of all um, i should accept and acknowledge that all the credit before me go to my family whether it's my parents yes. it's my wife it's my children uh, because without their sacrifice, without their support, it wasn't possible. Mm -hmm. I should acknowledge today that uh, whensoever I worked or whichsoever institution or organization I was part of, I got a wonderful team of my colleagues who supported me wholeheartedly, who took the responsibility and helped me or making me reach from that point until today. So my family, my friends, my relatives, my well-wishers, my clients, they play a very important role in my life yeah. and in my professional success, I should yeah. say. So I, I really tribute, I give credit to my family a lot. And of course, without God's blessing, nothing can yeah. happen. So it's his blessing yeah. and uh, with his blessing, we have reached here. Yes, indeed. And of course, mashallah, you are a really good, successful man. Hopefully, you will reach to more success in your life and maybe like inherit it to all of your family, inshallah. So if you want to also, let's say, some of the audience will be like, uh, let's say, some of the students that are going to be graduates and they want to pick their career in life. So as an architect, like, what do you advise the audience that are watching us, especially when they want to enter that field? Like, it's a... It's a more challenging and interesting field when it comes to being an architect. So what do you advise them in that part? Well, very nice questions you have put up. 
since uh, I began my business yes. uh, in the field of architecture and interiors, uh, we had been receiving lots of trainees and I should say the professional trainees who are studying in Kuwait, which is uh, in the field of architecture or interior design. And they, they have come and worked for a, year, uh, for a month or two months as a training. And every year we have it's a fortunate chance that there was a student who took the training and after completion of his graduation in architecture, mm -hmm. he came, we offered him a job and he was working with us until yesterday. Yesterday he left for higher studies. Mm -hmm. So I feel very proud. And my inspiration, that's a wonderful, very interesting, very unique branch, architecture. And if you have the, I should say the taste or flair for interior, because interior is very interesting. It's like you are seeing your own creation in within a very short period of time. You know, it's, mm -hmm. uh, it's like watching your own kid growing. Yes. So similarly, when you see a project in interior, which during a tenure of construction, normally construction tenure of interior projects are not very long. Mm -hmm. they, they are three months, six months, or one year is a lot of time. So within a, this small tenure, you see that uh, the project what we conceived you design you are part and you are associated so you see mashallah in front of you so i to all the newcomers or i would say the future of world or country or kuwait i say please do join architecture do join interior design it's a very interesting and again because everybody look towards basically financial success so that way it has all the ingredients what required to be successful, to lead a good life. So my message and motto to all of them, please, in architecture and interior is a very interesting branch. Please do not, and if anybody wish to uh, join or have a little, I should say, uh, uh, advice, yes. we are free and we are accessible through Kuwait TV, of course, through your channel, <laughs> and they can contact us. And our office doors are open for the training or any sort of counseling whatsoever is required for those students yes. who wants to join architecture. Yes, indeed. And as we reach to the end, like we have a last question for you, which is uh, as an Indian citizen, like how do you contribute to the Indian society when it comes into Kuwait? Well, uh, maybe from the, my student days, uh, I had been a very active um, worker or participant. So when I came to Kuwait, uh, you know, you have two parts in every person. Yes. One is a work and one is social. Mm -hmm. So I had been uh, associated with social cultural. Mm -hmm. I had been associated with educational uh, organization. I had been associated with business uh, association and I had been associated uh, with sports. Mm -hmm. uh, to share with you, uh, Satkar is an Indian organization. Yes. Uh, which is basically social and cultural organization mm -hmm. because people come from India and they are in a different environment. So we teach them values. We teach them how their families, what their ancestors, ancestors were. And then basically we guide them because when they go abroad, they do not forget who their parents were, who their grandparents were, what were the rituals, yes. what kind of a food, what kind of a dress, what kind of a living they were doing. Yes. So that's, I have to say, in, in the name of Satkar. Then um, I was associated with Indian Business Council. Mm -hmm. This was established in 2000 in Kuwait. At that time, our ambassador, Mr. Prabhu Dayal, and again, I would say I was chosen as the honorary general secretary of Indian Business Council. Mm -hmm. And we, because there were associations for every discipline. Yes but there was nothing for businessmen. So this association was formed to help and develop a business between Kuwait and India. And mashallah, I, I could say very proudly that we established this association, which where the members of Indian Business Society and Kuwaiti Society are part and members of this one. And we have exchanged, uh, I should say, lots of interaction between different business groups between Kuwait and visiting delegation from uh, India and it's mutual benefited and I'm still an active member of Indian Business Council though after uh, serving for two years as general secretary mm -hmm. it's going to be pass on the responsibility to next person yes. but that or organization is still doing very well similarly then it is we have educational uh, because there are a lot of 
children studying Indian children mm -hmm. and we have uh, 14 Indian school and four of them are Indian community school mm -hmm. I was one of the active member and uh, for the four school of Indian community and I was on the board for 14 years and served I can say that I used my professional knowledge professional yes. experience and skills yes. to develop the uh, school uh, premises uh, building classrooms, laboratory, washrooms, yes. play field and today oh, very proudly very I could yes. say that we uh, like three of them are situated in Salmia and one in Khetan mm -hmm. that all the buildings looks very nice beautifully that's amazing, yes. and that's what uh, we do. Yes. Uh, I, I had been a keen sports person throughout my life. I have played basketball uh, on a university level team. I played cricket on a university level team and billiards. In Kuwait when I came, so we were growing, so we wanted to establish uh, sports which, which we were playing b way back home and I found some Kuwaiti friends and I, I wish to mention Mr. Tahir Bastaki and Mr. Khalid Al Bastaki and they were also, they used to, they were only two gentlemen at that time. I'm talking this uh, very proudly that it, it's in 1995 yes. that we formed and the people of age about 35 years started playing that game yes. and it was called a veteran cricket. Yes. We have promoted yes. and I should say that today that game is thriving and the result of this that Kuwait is participating today in under 17, under 15 and under 19 international World Cup team. Yes. So I thank my Kuwaiti fellow friends for this who extended their support and uh, together we played yes. and we built up this society and we built up this institution so cricket is flourishing in Kuwait yeah. also. It's really interesting, and especially that cricket is, let's say, one of the let's say interesting games. And actually, we see them everywhere now in Kuwait, especially on the week weekends. Let's say. That's right. Yes. Well, thank you very much, Mr. Rajpal, for your time. It was really a pleasure having you as a guest. Hopefully, we'll see you again in an upcoming episode of Hala Kuwait. Thank you very much. At the end, I just would like to say my thanks and gratitude to the people yes. uh, who were part of the journey. And first of all, I would like to thanks God, thanks my family, as I said, to my parents, my wife, my children who supported, my colleagues in my office, or all these institutions, whether it is Satkar, Indian Business yeah. Council, Indian Community School, or the sports, and last but not the least, the people who gave me the break to start my business is a, is a restaurant company called Mughal Mahal Restaurants. They gave me the break. And owners, I definitely want to mention today, I am grateful and thankful to them that Mughal Mahal gave me this break and I started my work with them. I designed and built 11 restaurants for them here and two restaurants, one in Lebanon and one in Egypt. Yes. So thank you Mughal Mahal. Not only this, to my all the clients yes. who supported me in my this journey of professional skills. Yes. Well, thank you very much, Mr. Rajpal. And with that, dear viewers, we're going to head to our report on fire de department segment, so stay tuned with us. Thank you very much. Thank you for interviewing.